Hey guys, it's the Insane Aerospace Engineer here, back with another video for my console tutorial series. Today we're going to go to the moon, and we're finally going to go somewhere else, and I'll teach you the simple mechanics of transferring to other bodies, mainly bodies in your own system. We won't be going over any advanced interplanetary transfers in this episode or anything like that. Just the moon. And uh, then I'll do one on Minmus as well later on. Minmus is pretty easy too. I'd actually say Minmus is better than the moon, which is exactly why, or Minmus is easier than the moon, which is exactly why we're starting with the moon. Uh, so, so I got my ship here. We're just going to do our normal launch to orbit. I recommend putting some air brakes on the front of this thing so that uh, when uh, you're coming down in case it flips and you can't get it to turn around again, uh, you still have a way to slow down. Because uh, I remember when I was on my doing my stream last night, my live stream on my Twitch channel, um, I actually was trying to rescue some Kerbals and uh, the mission failed miserably and all the Kerbals died because, because my ship uh, flipped over on the way down and the, it, there was reduced drag because the command pod is, uh, is uh, like a nose cone. So, so it couldn't slow down enough in it before to activate the parachutes, and I hit the ocean, which sucked a lot. Thankfully, I have Kerbal cloning on there, so we can bring him back. Just doing our, gonna start my gravity turn a little early, so we have enough time to turn. Remember, make sure you're doing your gravity turn slowly. Don't, uh, don't rush it. If you do, you'll just, uh. You'll just end up uh, getting flipped over by aerodynamic forces. Throttling down a little bit here. Keeping the turn going. Pretty much this normal orbit procedure, not much to talk about here. Make sure you're on a perfect equatorial orbit so that you don't, uh, so that it, it'll make it a lot easier to get to the moon, because the moon's on a perfect equatorial orbit as well, there's no inclination. Our real moon has, in, has some inclination. I'd argue against there being able to be a moon with a perfect orbit, but this is a game, so we'll forgive. Our real moon also has an eccentric orbit. Of course, it's not very eccentric. When you see huge moons in the sky, that's just an optical illusion. Alright, so we're doing, we're doing okay here. Is our first stage run out? Start burning our second stage here. Max power. I'm just gonna have a look at what our what our orbit looks like so far. Pretty nice, pretty nice. 79 kilometers. I think we'll do that. Angling, I'm gonna angle my ship up a little bit to keep altitude. Pull it down a little bit now to keep speed.
almost there. And there we are. Let's see what we got here. Perfect. All right. Now we're headed for the moon. So what you're going to do now is you're going to set the moon as a target. And you have these two green markers that show up. You have the ascending node and the descending node. The moon orbits pretty quickly around. So it doesn't take much to catch up. You can probably you could probably catch up to it right here. So so when you're looking look for the ascending look for the node. These look for the green node. That's the closest to the actual moon. But you may need to make adjustments off that path. Like to the left or the right like this. Like here or here. To actually kind of adjust for to intercept the moon. Because the ascending node and the descending node aren't always 100% accurate. But most of the time you can use them. And as you can see immediately we have an intercept with the moon. But I'm going to show you how to adjust it right all I did was drag the program marker forward and it raised our orbit up so that such that we would get an encounter with the moon. So let's focus view on the moon and if we focus view we can see what our predicted periapsis around the moon is during our intercept. So let's go ahead and click on our maneuver node again, right? And we're going to try moving our moving these uh, radio and anti-radio markers to change our orbit. So as you can see, we've uh, brought our orbit much closer to the moon, and this, this means that we'll pass closer and we won't have to waste as much fuel, like, we can just basically slow down pretty much right away and we won't have to waste as much fuel. So yeah, drag it, get it really nice and close. Around the moon, there, the moon has no atmosphere, so you can orbit as close as you want. So the, the lowest orbit on the moon is the highest mountain go any lower than that and you'll probably hit a mountain and die all right so there we are we're 24 kilometers from the surface but I'm gonna bring it down a little more so nope 19 not quite ready yet oh, come on now. oh oops that's that's too much Alright, so yeah, 7 kilometers from the surface. There we go, that's what we'll do. So we're going in for a friggin' really close and fast approach where we'll just kill off all our lateral velocity immediately. So once you're done that, just line up with the maneuver node. You adjust the radial and anti-radial um, uh, vectors to move your orbit side to side. You won't need to worry about the purple ones, the normal and the anti-normal. Just prograde, retrograde, radial and anti-radial. <coughs> oh, sorry. All right, so we're lined up with our node here. I'm gonna enable my cursor and start the time warp. All right, so I'm gonna start my burn about uh, 15 seconds before I actually hit the node. So I'll start now. Predicted burn is about 40 seconds, don't worry about that. You can go over your node. Start a little bit before, don't start a lot before, otherwise you could end up falling back to the planet. Things should have more than enough fuel to get there. Watching, of course, also focus your view on the moon. Keep it focused so that you can watch your uh, your predicted periapsis and make sure it lands in the correct spot. Huh? There we are. So see, we'll just make our small adjustments, our leftover adjustments now. Right on the money. 
Yep, our predicted, uh, let me see here. Predicted periapsis is, yep, right on the money. Okay. Now we're going to time warp to 10,000 times time warp. Don't worry. The, uh, when you get close to your encounter, the game actually automatically slows the time warp down. Actually, a thousand times is probably good. Yeah, just hit a thousand times, not ten thousand times. And as you can see, we meet up with the moon. Its gravity pulls us in. And now we're just gonna get down nice and close to here. We'll be seven kilometers from the surface. Let's do a hundred times time warp. Don't do anything until you get close. Because otherwise, if you try to burn retrograde right now, it'll actually push your periapsis so that, uh, down more so that you're on a direct collision course. So don't do anything until you actually reach your periapsis. Just time warp until then. And don't enable a thousand times time warp. You'll miss your exit. Just be patient. I'm actually going to show you guys this from uh, what it looks like from from map view or from this view. As you can see, falling nice and close to the surface. Looks really neat. The leg is because of the rendering. Console has to pause to render the surface of the moon. Alright, so we're here now. Getting close to our uh, target periapsis. So I'm going to go ahead and start adjusting for retrograde. Also carry a parachute for this mission because that way, you know, you can slow down once you're in the atmosphere. Those air brakes will help tremendously, I think. Okay, so I'm just gonna see how much fuel I have left on this stage by by enabling my cursor and uh, clicking the resource display in the corner here and switching it to stage view. We have 37 units left in this tank, so not much. So we're gonna start burning a little early. That way, we waste off that 37 units right away, and then we'll have to stage them. We're already in orbit, as you can see. It doesn't take much to get in orbit around the moon. Landing is the tricky part. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to switch over to staging mode. Because we need to do this landing in staging mode. So we can actually see where our ship is going. We are traveling tremendously fast across that surface. So yeah, we're just, you, we're just pointing at the retrograde marker and killing all of our velocity so you could even just press the retrograde button on here but make sure you you turn off on and off SAS like this once you start to slow down so that way you have control in fact actually don't use the retrograde marker point towards it on your nav ball it doesn't take long because uh, if you don't you'll uh, you'll not have direct control of the ship and you won't be able to do what you want to as you can see slowing down all the way here already 50 meters per second what we're gonna do now is once we hit about 30 meters per second we're just gonna we're gonna let it fall right because our retrograde marker will automatically move to match like what our orbit's like because it's always showing where you point to slow down right with your rockets all right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy our landing legs Alright, so we're just going to wait.